Hello AP Calculus PC students, Mr. Record here for a tiny shortest of all videos possible about introducing the first phase of our polar uh, graphing. And really I want you to understand that the, the calculus that we're going to present to you throughout the rest of this unit nine is going to really focus on what we can do with calculus with polar, like finding the equations of tangent lines, finding vertical horizontal tangents, finding area. It's not so important that you become a master of being able to graph every possible polar curve, but getting us some confidence on knowing what certain polar curves look like can certainly help out a little bit. And plus, a lot of students don't see a real robust curriculum of polar graphing in their trig courses anymore. And so we thought this is a good time to do that. So bear with and enjoy here for uh, these short little examples. So in our example seven, we're asked to sketch the graph of a few different curves here, as you can see. And the first one is r equal two. And the thing that you're gonna wanna think about for this r equal two is just the fact it says what it says, radius equals two. Doesn't say anything about the angle measure. So you could say, well, the angle measure could be anything it wants to then. So if you think about the radius two, which is any point along this concentric circle, all we would nearly need to do is connect those dots along that concentric circle. Notice this is the circle that's two units out from the pole. And boom, you have just graphed r equal two. We saw a similar problem in example number six about r equal four. So this probably wasn't a big surprise. Now you could check A on a graphing calculator, TI-84, TI-Inspire, any model, but B is a bit of a problem in terms of checking on a graphing calculator because they will innately want R to be by itself. And now when we have theta by itself, we have to think a little bit differently. Well, if you recall, when we first introduced these polar uh, coordinate planes that I gave you is that each spoke was a pi over 12. So pi over three would be, one, two, three, four pi over 12, which is this spoke right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one so we don't get confused. Now you just simply say any R value along that spoke, whether it was positive or, yep, negative on this side, would indeed be the correct depiction of the curve. And you could go ahead and put arrows there because this graph would go on forever. We could have as many concentric circles as we possibly want, and that's what theta equal pi over three looks like. For part C, we could graph this one on a graphing calculator. In fact, I kind of did that a moment ago. We, we worked through example six, but when you think about this guy here, really what's happening is the key is to call the secant cosine of theta, and then if you cross multiply r cosine theta equal one, you find yourself saying, well, r cosine, that looks awful familiar, that's x x equal one. So you've got your vertical line, which is a little tough to sketch without having those nice rectangular grid boxes, but that does about as good of a job as any to depict what r equals secant of theta is gonna look like. So there you have your three kind of simple uh, polar curves that are gonna segue into a couple more complicated ones in some upcoming videos. Hope this helps, we'll see you next time.